Well, good morning, church. Oh, man, am I excited. We're going to celebrate this little event called the Reformation. We got the school kids here singing with us. So we're actually going to start with our opening song right away. As we're able, let's get on our feet. Let's sing This Is Amazing Grace. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with mighty thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory. The King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is a failing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory, who rules a nation. With truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. you've done for me worthy is the lamb who was slain and worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain and worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. I sing for all that you've done for me. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Let's grab our seats because these guys are going to sing for what the Lord has done.
All right, they are going to come join you in your seats. So here they come in a flood. Oh, we got to stay on our feet, y'all. Let's, let's stay on our feet so you can see and find our homes there. Our invocation. So go ahead and stay on your feet as we continue with our worship service here. At Trinity, we begin uh, every service in, in God's name, in his triune name. Uh, this morning, we're going to celebrate that Jesus chooses to intentionally create community uh, among people that we might not think he would choose. That, that Jesus wants to be associated with people that we maybe would be tempted to not put at the top of his list. He chooses to associate himself with people like us. Real people. With real lives in need of real hope. And in Jesus, that hope is yours. So that's why we begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, we'll speak together our confession. This is our time when we express our need uh, for Jesus to rescue us. We speak this together. Almighty God, we confess that our pride and selfishness cause us to forget that you have made us in your image. We admit that we have chosen not to reflect your unfailing love and mercy to the people around us. Through the victory Jesus won for us, forgive us for all our mistakes and make your reflection in us whole again. Guide us through your Holy Spirit to reflect your goodness to every person Amen. Friends, you've probably experienced those moments when, when you, you feel that you've let other people down, that you've, you've ruined something, that, that you're ashamed of something you've said or done, uh, that, that, you, that you have brought yourself to a moment of regret. And, and those moments are real and those moments are powerful. But friends, Jesus has the power to meet those moments. He has the power to redeem those moments and make you whole. Jesus chooses to restore you, not just to who you were, but to who he wants you to be, the wholeness of who God calls you to be and named you to be. And that work he does, he does through his forgiveness. He doesn't through, do it through a list of things that you have to do to, to fix yourself. Instead, he does it through the power of his forgiveness. And the power of his forgiveness feels like this. Friends, your sins, all of your sins, every single last one of your sins, in the name of Jesus, they are forgiven. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's share that love of Jesus with those around us. Good job. What kind of high five was... salvation, one doorway that leads to life, one redemption, one confession, I believe in the name of Jesus Christ. I 
I believe in the crucifixion. By his blood I have been set free. I believe in the resurrection. Hallelujah, his life is destined. All praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome the King who was and is and evermore will be in Jesus Christ. Preparing a place for me Far beyond what hearts imagine Ears have heard, or eyes have seen I believe that the day is coming He's returning to claim his bride Light the altar, keep it burning See the Lamb who rose a roaring lion All praise to God the Father Praise to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome, the King who was and is and evermore will be, in Jesus' mighty name I believe. All praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son. All praise to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome. The King who was and is and evermore will be, in Jesus' mighty name, I believe. In Jesus' mighty name, I We're going to remain standing this morning for our first reading from the book of Revelation. Our reading this morning is from Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 7. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And now we turn to the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist... Until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children singing in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge for you, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet, wisdom is justified by her deeds. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. Let's grab our seats. Mr. Gideon's going to do a children's message, so if you are under the age of 27, come on down. It's time to prove it, ladies. 27. 27. Come on down. Grab a seat. Oops, I'm sorry. What's up?
Look at all of you guys. Who's doing good this morning? Who's super awake and ready to jump for joy? All right. Well, I'm going to stand up here so all of you guys can see me. But today, we're going to talk about presents. Now, now you guys might be saying, oh, Mr. Gideon, Christmas isn't for a long time, but we got snow, so it's time to celebrate Christmas, right? And I, I really like presents, and I think it's always a good time to talk about presents. Who else likes presents? Does, does anyone not like getting presents? Well, I really like to get presents, and I want someone to tell me what the best present you ever got was. Right here. A big, giant stuffy. I love those, too. Who else? Right back here. A snowboard. You know, if you give Pastor Brian one of those, he'll tear his shoulder. <laughs> Who else got a really good present? A dollhouse. Not quite on my Christmas list, but some people like dollhouses. Yeah. A Nintendo Switch. One more right back there. A train. So we all have these super cool presents that we like, and I really like presents. And sometimes we get presents from our parents and our grandparents, but there's one other person who gives us presents. Does anyone know who it is? Jory. God. God gives us presents along with Santa. But we're going to talk about God today, okay? We can talk about Santa one, some other time. So I have this present from God. Does anyone want to help me open God's present? Okay, right here. Come on down. And you two ladies, come on down and help us open our present from God. I just want to tear out all those plastic bags, Mr. Gideon's wonderful wrapping skills. What's in there? What is that? What? Did, did anyone ask, ask for this present? You girls can go sit down. Thanks for helping me. What? Why would this be a present that God gives us? He died on the cross. Let's go ahead and read about it in our Bibles because God tells us exactly what this present is. Okay? He says in Ephesians that you are saved from all your sin because Jesus died on the cross. You didn't have to do anything to get it. Do you guys do anything to get presents? Or are they free? They're completely free. So it's the same thing with God's present. You didn't have to do anything to get it. It's free. It's a gift from God. So what is so special about this present? Yeah. Do you know? Who else knows what's so special about this present? He saved us from our sin. And did we have to do anything to get saved? No. It's free. So Jesus died to save you from every wrong thing you've done and every wrong thing you will do and all the countless wrong things that Pastor Brian will do. <laughs> and God said, I love you so much that I'm going to give you the gift, give you the present of my one and only son, and it's going to be completely free. 
Isn't that pretty cool? I think that's pretty cool. Let's pray. Will you guys repeat after me? Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to die for us. Thank you for giving us the best present ever. Help Christmas to come quickly. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up. You guys can go back to your seats. I thought Mr. Gideon was being a little rough on me. What do you guys think? <clears throat> wow. All right. So here we, here we are. So for those of you who, who aren't super familiar with Trinity, this is, uh, this is Trinity. Surprise. Uh, uh, we're a Lutheran church. And if you don't know what a Lutheran is, uh, you're not alone. Uh, many of us are trying to figure that out. So... Uh, we're going to talk about Reformation. Breck, turn me down just a little bit. I, uh, what is the Reformation? Uh, so so the, the Reformation happened about 500 years ago. Actually, in the year 2017, we celebrated the 500th anniversary of this event called the Reformation. Now, Lutherans are not the only people that celebrate this event. Uh, Presbyterians, Methodists, Baptists, uh, Pentecostals, Charismatics, all of these Lutheran faith groups, Christian faith groups, I'm sorry, all of them, really the Reformation was that moment. It was that, that turning moment where uh, the gospel was rediscovered and where uh, multiple denominations were established and, and the church has changed so radically. So, Reformation. This morning we're going to work to discover a little bit, um, if, if you're a Lutheran, you're a member at Trinity, kind of rediscover what is the, the core teaching here that holds us together as Lutherans. And, and if you're not from Trinity, uh, this, this is what we're all about, whether your kid's in school here, whether they're at our child care, if your kids come to our camp, um, or if you just were walking in, heard some kids singing, and you're like, I want some of this, and you came on in, Welcome. So we're going to turn to Jesus' words here, uh, Matthew chapter 11. It's pretty early in Jesus' life. And, and Jesus is, is talking to John the Baptist. Now John the Baptist is the last prophet. He is the last one who's been given a message from God that's pointing forward to the arrival of Jesus. Now, John the Baptist is doing a good job. Jesus says about John the Baptist... That there's never been another man born of a woman who is as good, as great as John the Baptist. Jesus, Jesus is like all in for his, for his friend John the Baptist. He's, this guy's a 10 out of 10. All right? But we're going to see here how he's being received. So, so Jesus is, okay, but what, what can I compare this generation to? So he's talking to the people around him. Uh, he's been talking about John the Baptist. He says, this generation, the generation of Jesus, is like children sitting in the marketplace calling to their playmates, hey, we played a flute and you, you didn't dance. That's pretty rude, right? Uh, we sang a dirge. You guys use that word like in your everyday conversations, right? Right? Like that sermon was a dirge. There's something like that. <laughs> um, and you didn't mourn. So, right? So, essentially, hey, we, we, we played this song expecting y'all to party, throw a little rave or something, and you didn't do it. We, we sang this song thinking, hey, this is, you're all going to be sad, and you didn't do it. So, so, what's going on here is there's this 
there's this rub between the songs that are being played by these people and the reaction. Let me tell you why I told you that. Jesus says, John came, right, John the Baptist, he comes, he's not eating or drinking, and they say he has a demon. So, so this is like uh, that kind of Christian life where uh, we might know it as like a minimalist type of life or, or an aesthetic kind of life. It's where we give up a bunch to really help us connect with God, to be like super faithful. Uh, sometimes we'll think of people who dedicate their life to going into a monastery or, or actually in Egypt it became super popular to give up everything you had and to go into the desert and study God's word. John the Baptist, that's his approach. He's like, I'm going to live a minimalist lifestyle. I'm only going to have one TV in my house. We're going to share a car. It's going to be a new one. We're going to lease it. Uh, and, and so he had this whole minimalist lifestyle. And Jesus, like I said earlier, he's all in for John the Baptist. All in for this guy. And, and yet, in, the, in spite of his faithfulness and his, his doing his best to give up everything for, for his relationship with God, people reject him. They, they're like, ah, no, something's wrong with that guy. He's a little off. Okay, Now, Jesus compares John's approach with his own approach. So Jesus says, hey, John came this way. He, he wasn't eating or drinking. And then he says, the son of man, that's Jesus' nickname. He gives it to himself. Okay, So, hey, the son of man, a.k.a. Jesus, he came eating and drinking. And they said, look at him. He's a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Not too complicated of an argument here, friends. Jesus is essentially saying, God is making his appeal to you through John the Baptist in one way. He's appealing to his people through, through Jesus, his son, in this way. And John the Baptist is not good enough. Like he has a demon. That's, that's pretty extreme. Right? We don't usually say that about people. And then Jesus comes, right? And, and he's embracing people and they say he's a glutton a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors, and sinners. None of those are the top ten compliments. So he's like, this is a no win. Right? G Jesus is like, you guys have placed us in a no win scenario. Why won't you hear us? So sometimes the, what the Bible does is the Bible grabs some phrases uh, in the New Testament uh, that, that we maybe don't really fully realize, but they're grabbing a phrase from the Old Testament when they do that. And for you and I, if we're like reading a web page or something and we see a hyperlink, uh, we would click that because it, it shared the story that's behind that statement. So uh, I'm going to click the hyperlink with this fancy doodad, and it's going to take us, it's going to hyperlink this phrase. Right? Jesus labels himself this way. A glutton and a drunkard. This is what they're saying about him. But like if the Bible had hyperlinks, that would look like I'm going to push the hyperlink. It takes us to Deuteronomy chapter 21. So, Deuteronomy 21, it says, If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother... All right, men, how many of that is describing you? This is church. It's a safe place. Go ahead and raise your hands. Barry, come on. Unbelievable. Gentlemen. The women are like, I'm so glad it doesn't say daughter. Daughters, too. Y'all are giggling because you know. All right, so if anybody, right, not too far outside the realm of possibilities, okay, if they have a son like this, uh, and though they discipline him, will not listen to them. All right. So, this is high school. All right. Then his father and his mother shall take hold of him and bring him out to the elders of his city at the gate of the place where he lives. And they shall say to the elders of the city, this our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He's a glutton and a drunkard. Oh, man. 
God's son, his only begotten son, the one that God, at his baptism, the father like grabs the heavens, rips them open, looks down and says, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Right? And then he neatly puts the clouds back together. People are saying that his son, he who bears the name that will cause every knee to bow, that he is a drunkard, that he is a glutton. So what God has said is this is perfect and awesome and good. This is the definition of all that is good. Jesus is the gold standard. The people around Jesus are basically saying he's a failure. He needs punishment. So they're rejecting Jesus in every possible way. Friends, this is Matthew 11. This is not Matthew 24, 25, 26. This isn't the end of the story. This is the beginning of the story. And the people are already saying, what God says is good, we say is bad. What God says is awesome and glorious, we say is bad. Now, Jesus is also implying a further meaning. It says at the end of that statement, then all the men of the city shall stone him to death with stones, so you shall purge the evil from your midst, and all Israel shall hear and fear. First reaction is, that's pretty severe. The second reaction is, what happened to Jesus outside of his city? And was it the people of his city that did that to Jesus outside of his city? And when Jesus died outside of his city by the hands of his people, he died with your sin, with my sin as Gideon so nicely emphasized in the children's message. <laughs> My countless sins. I believe that was the word, countless? Countless. Countless sins. You see, Jesus died as the world's worst sinner. Jesus died with the weight of the world on his shoulders, with all of your sins on his shoulders. He died with everything that is wrong, everything that's broken, everything that's sad, placed by his father on his shoulders, and God condemned Jesus to die in your place for all the things you would do, for all the sins that you would commit. Jesus fulfills this, and it's scandalous that he would die there as a failure on our behalf. Matthew chapter 11 Jesus is hyperlinking, not just back to the Old Testament, but to say, hey, I'm going to fulfill this Old Testament verse very soon. I'm going to fulfill it with my life. Wow. I'm going to go there and do that. Because Jesus' obedience to the Father made him look like a failure. And he was willing to go there for you. He did go there for you. There's more. So, but he, he, Jesus also has a second hyperlink. He's all about the internet. It's super handy. Okay? So, um, but he does not link to Wikipedia. Mm, unreliable. He goes scholarly. So, so the, the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, look at him. Right? He's a glutton and a drunkard. And he's a friend of tax collectors and sinners. He's a friend of tax collectors and sinners. These are the people that Jesus associates with. Now, in many ways in our lives, we think that you, you have to 
to place yourself with winners if you want to be a winner. You want to place yourself with good company if you want to have good morals. That, that we, we esteem that, that for us to be successful, we have to be in the winner's circle. And so we try to be there. We strive hard to be there. We want to rise to the top. We want to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. But Jesus is so confident and assured in who he is and what that means that he chooses on purpose and with intentionality to associate with us, with sinners. So Jesus' first nickname, I'm the Son of Man, that's, that's a pretty big claim. Lots of Old Testament verses there. It, it has lots of power to it. But this one is a powerless claim. This is a nickname that Jesus owns. He owns it full on, and he doesn't care who knows it. He chooses not to associate with sinners when no one else is looking. Let me say that one more time. He doesn't choose to associate with sinners when no one else is looking. He does it for everyone to see. So all of this is really to reinforce the basic question this morning. <laughs> Who are the Lutherans? What, what is all this crazy talk that they have? And, and, and why are they celebrating something called the Reformation that happened like before the birth of America? Right? Well, a few hundred years ago, big things happened, but, but I'm going to read for you a quote. And the quote is from Dietrich Bonhoeffer. You may have heard about him. He was a Lutheran pastor in Nazi Germany. Uh, Dietrich had the, the, the burden placed upon him that even though he was a Lutheran pastor, he could not sit idly by. Uh, and so he, he fought, uh, did his very best to eliminate actively the evil he saw around him, which ended up sending him to prison, and, and there he wrote many great things. And you see, G Dietrich took this whole friend of sinners very, very seriously. And, and it was he considered the Lutheran church, he considered that, that this church that he was a part of, that it must, at its very core, be a gathering of sinners. People who are okay with being a sinner, even proud for other people to know they're a sinner because sinners have one very powerful friend. So if that's who Lutherans are going to be, they're going to be these sinners that are, that are going to be like bold about the fact that they're not perfect but they, they have a really good friend, and he actually is perfect. What do we do as Lutherans? What, what is this whole Lutheran thing about? And, and so he talks about that. And, and as he describes the church, he says these words. Uh, the words on the screen are, are an excerpt. God has willed that we should seek and find God's living word in the testimony of other Christians, in the mouths of human beings. Therefore, Christians need other Christians who speak God's word to them. They need them again and again. If you're Pastor Brian and you have countless sins, again and again and again and again. We're going to talk about that on Monday. <laughs> Ad-libbing here. Uh, again and again. We need to hear from other Christians again and again when they become uncertain and disheartened because living by their own resources they cannot help themselves without cheating themselves out of the truth. They need other Christians as bearers and proclaimers of the divine word of salvation. They need them solely for the sake of Jesus. The Christ in one's own heart is weaker than the Christ and the word of another Christian. The heart in one's own chest is uncertain, but the word is certain. At the same time, this also clarifies that the goal of all Christian community, the goal of all Christian community is to encounter one another as bringers of the message of salvation. As bringers of the message of salvation. The friend of sinners empowers you to be 
a friend of sinners. It doesn't matter if you've been a Lutheran your whole life, been a Lutheran for five minutes, or you're thinking about becoming a Lutheran. This is it. It is the good news of great joy that Jesus died for sinners. That he died for me. That he died for you. And, and the whole fabric, the tapestry that is the Lutheran church, it revolves and is centered and it lives and breathes as Christians remind each other over and over and over and over again, not that they should try harder or believe more or work harder, but that Jesus loves them. And that in Jesus, they are forgiven. In Jesus, they have been adopted. In Jesus, they are more than victorious. In Jesus, they are above every accusation. In Jesus, they are a new creation. In Jesus, there is no shame. There is no failure. There is nothing that can separate them from the glory of God. Friends, Lutherans have gone by a few different names in all the years that have gone by, but the bold proclamation of the Lutheran church, of the message of Jesus, is very, very simple. And the Holy Spirit is going to empower all of us to speak hope, real hope, for real people in Jesus. So friends, I'm going to prime the pump right now. I'm going to get you started and, and and then we're going to continue with our offering. This is, what, this is what it sounds like. Friends, Jesus loves you. He pursues you. He values you. He treasures you. Jesus has declared that you are worthy of the salvation he won for you on the cross. Nobody can take that away from you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, in fact, it would sound like the Christian message in, in all of the verses of the Bible and all of its centuries of practice is at its core simple. That you, the Son of God, would die on the cross for the forgiveness of the whole world. That in your name, life and salvation would be announced for all people. Jesus. Jesus, give us not only that hope for our own hearts, but Lord, empower our hearts. Give us the words to say that we may encourage all of our brothers and sisters. Jesus, all this we pray in your name. Amen. As we are able, let's rise, and as we get ready, the kids are going to come on down. So Trinity Lutheran School kids, it's going to be a remix and a repeat. Come on down. As they're coming down, let's say these words together. I believe in the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible. Go get it, guys. And one holy... Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. In a day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life,
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we're taking our offering. We're going to hear some singing. As we are able, let's rise for prayer. Did, did you hear the song they were singing? They were, they were telling you the good news of Jesus? You see how God used the mouth of children 
to do his promises, to keep his promises to us. Jesus speaks to us through each other. Friends, this, this morning we're going to go in prayer to him. At the, at the end of every section of prayer, I'm going to fra- say the phrase, Lord, in your mercy. And then I'll stop and the church together will say, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you, you promised to, to be with us. You promised to be with us no matter what, no matter uh, what guilt or shame, whatever wrong we may have committed, that it doesn't scare you off. For you have chosen to be known as a friend of sinners. Jesus, we, we rejoice because, because that means we don't have to, to make ourselves good enough for you but that you have made yourself our friend. Jesus, may this message uh, may empower us not only in our own lives, but also to encourage and build each other up, Lord. May we constantly be speaking your promises over and over and over to those around us. This, Lord, we, we know we can only do by your power, so we pray that you would make your power presence in our lives. Lord, in your mercy... Gracious Heavenly Father, uh, the thing with being a sinner, it, it means that, that life's going to be a mess uh, in our relationships, uh, in, in our professional lives, in our family lives, but, but also in our physical lives. So Lord, we want to lift up to you anybody who's going through a season of adversity and pain. Uh, Lord, especially, uh, it can cause us a lot of fear if we're sick and hurting. So Lord, we lift before you Larry Bailey. Connie, Newell, Gary, Gloria, Deba, Deborah, Scott, Leo, Julie, Andrew, and Claudia. Lord, we also want to lift before you all the families of, of those who are grieving. Jesus, we've all been touched by loss, and, and there's only one message that's strong enough for that pain, and that message is the good news that you have promised that you will never, ever, ever be away from us. And so, Jesus, we lift before you the families of Joni and Susan and Cloar as they mourn their loss. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, we thank you uh, for all of these school kids. Lord, whether, <laughs> whether we're saying thank you for our own kids or thank you for the kids of, uh, of our friends and classmates, Lord, um, the community that you have been nurturing in our school is exceptional. It's exceptional because of your name, because of the hope that is shared, the joy that is celebrated. Heavenly Father, we pray for for all of our teachers um, and administration. Lord, we, we pray for the leadership of Mrs. White, that this place would continue to be a safe place, a place where Jesus hangs out with sinners. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we read the news these days, there's a lot of uncertainty. Just like you said that the future would contain wars and and rumors of wars. Uh, Lord, that's especially unnerving for us if we have family members or loved ones that are serving in the military. So Lord, we lift before you Wyatt and Cole, Tucker, Jaden, James, John, Eli, Preston, Garrett, Dylan, Tavian, Cole, Mark, Chris, Reed, and Jared. Lord, preserve them as they serve our country, both in body and soul, Lord. Sustain their faith as they grow through times uh, of loneliness and times of struggle. Jesus, we pray that you would bring them home to their families, to their loved ones in safety. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, uh, the good news of your kingdom is that you invite sinners in. And not that you just invite them in, but that you have chosen to be associated with them. You've made them to be your people, kingdom people, just as they are. In fact, you've even encouraged us to call upon the name of God the Father as if he's our Father. And so Jesus will we'll take you up on that. We will pray as you have taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, receive his blessing, the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his very face to you and give you now and forever his peace. Amen. Let's sing our final song. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. Remember your children. Since we're clapping, we might as well clap for them kids one more time. Good job, guys. Oh, that was awesome. Two quick reminders before you go. Uh, our church has a new app. It looks like this. Just download it in your app store. And secondly, in a few hours, Trunk or Treat's going to start. Now, I heard that God's going to turn the temperature up to like 62 for the two hours between two and four. Uh, we'll see. But anyway, there's going to be some sugar, some fun. These teachers go all out. We'll see you then. Uh, I'll send you with this, friends. Go in peace and praise the Lord. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Your grace is enough. Heaven reaches out to us.